This is the second time that I have invested in a focusing system, and it's been because I continually find myself compromising my footage without one. So let's get in. Do you want my review on this piece first, or why I use it, and what scenarios it saves my butt in? What was that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I guess I'll have to guess. I have grown to love small rig and trust anything they put out, and this follow focus system is no different. Now I have it on this cheese plate uh, just for uh, the ability to show you how it functions and all that. It won't come with the uh, follow focus if you get it using the affiliate links in the description below. But for under $100, this is solidly built, functions impeccably, and is wonderfully versatile. Ergonomically, it's an absolute pleasure to use. It feels great, has the perfect amount of resistance and smoothness for precise focusing. It comes with a couple of these adjustable gearing pieces. So this is obviously intended for a commercial videographer like myself and not for a feature length big budget film set. I use two of the three lens I own 98% of the time I'm filming, so I permanently leave these gear rings on them, whether I'm using the follow focus system or not. They don't inhibit my work, storage, or travel, so it makes everything a lot faster when I have to use the follow focus. The focus itself can slip on and off this rail very quickly and easily, so I can adjust it to the exact place I need it in relation to my lens. I use this all of the time with this thing, so I love the convenience built into this feature. So for instance, my two main lenses have focus rings at very different distances from the camera, and I have to slip this uh, focus ring on and off or into different places when using or swapping lenses. So I can move it, as you saw, just even one-handed very quickly to the front or back end of the rail like this, and now it's set back a little bit, or I can even slip the whole rail out if I need to. Just very quick and easy, even one-handed, to quickly get it lined up exactly where I need it to be on the lens. It's also super quick and easy to pull it back away from the lens, just using uh, the tightening or loosening feature there. So it's easy to access something on the lens or pull the lens on and off. Now it has these handy dandy little pins on here for pulling precise focus. So if you're racking your shot from one specific place to another, you basically dial in where that focus is. You tighten this pin down here and let's say it's right over here. Tighten this down like that. And then you, you flip this little switch piece here and now you can rack focus go all the way up hit that and bam you're right at that focus right at that focus and you don't have to worry about um, getting it precisely with your hand these will stop you at the exact point that you need now i will say that these pins i have personally found seem to jiggle loose and fall out into my bag rather easily I have yet to lose them, but they don't seem to do well staying attached to the focus wheel if I haven't screwed them down snugly. Most of the time I'm not using this feature, so they tend to come out. Now that would be one knock that I have against this. So far it's been a complete non-issue because I haven't lost them and I don't generally need this feature, but I could see it being an issue down the road if either of those change. So yeah, I really love this thing. Definitely has come in clutch many, many times. When is it, you might ask? Well, specifically, when I'm running around getting handheld B-roll. When I'm doing run and gun work, I would be forced to grab the lens itself to focus. Two issues here. I'll use this camera for illustrative purposes. Yes, I'm getting a second point of contact, which is great, but the problem is I'm right on top of the axis from the lens to the sensor. At ground zero, the most minor bumps and jitters are going to be noticed. Secondly, the angle of my hand and wrist is not the most conducive for significant focus changing. Ergonomically, my arm and wrist and hand cannot rotate in this direction very well from this vantage point. It even wants to kind of go more at a diagonal to go exactly perpendicular, very uncomfortable and not a lot of range of motion. But by adding the follow focus, I get my hand away from the lens. Just kind of hold this in place here. I get my hand away from the lens and I'm utilizing the full range of motion from my fingers and my wrist. Notice how much further both you and I can rotate 
a round gear in this orientation with your fingers and wrist than in this one. And it creates for much more smooth focus pulling because I'm never really pausing my focus to get another crank in. Before investing in this focus reel, I found myself unable to get certain shots because the focus rack was too significant for my coordination or I was ruining footage by jostling the camera way too much when touching the lens. Now I get much better and much more usable footage. I don't tend to use this at all in interview scenarios because I can dial in my focus and generally leave it there. Or if I need to adjust focus, I have the camera locked down on a tripod, stabilizing it, and I'm needing to only make a very slight adjustment. So I'm still avoiding the aforementioned two issues. Actually, I just wanted to use the word aforementioned. That said, when shooting both interviews and B-roll, I will leave this on my rig, even for the interviews, and use it during the interview, but I won't pack it if I'm doing just interviews only. At that point, it's really unnecessary. All in all though, it does make focusing so much easier, and I get far better B-roll with it. If you shoot lots of B-roll, I think you will find this to be well worth your investment. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you because though I won't be seeing you in the next video, you're sure to see me rough.